Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 656. Knowing the different types of testosterone and how to choose the right one. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today um, I am going to talk about a subject I talk about a lot in the office, and that is uh, about testosterone as a replacement, testosterone, uh, forms of different kinds of testosterone, different forms of testosterone, uh, as replacement for people who are aging, women over 40, men over 50, also, how to make a choice, do you need it, and what kind of testosterone is would be best for you or is best in general. Um, I came upon this subject because I have feel so much anxiety from my patients when they come in to see me before they start their testosterone treatment, and we've gone over, I've gone over all their labs. I know that this will be a good treatment for them and that it will be safe, or I wouldn't be having them come in for the consult. So I already know that a lot about them, but unfortunately, there's a lot of bad press about testosterone. I don't know why, except that way back when, um, there was, it gained a lot of bad press because it was used in inappropriate ways in young men to make their um, athletic um, their athletic prowess better. So that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not going to talk about. I'm not talking about testosterone for athletes or testosterone that is made from adrenal androgens. I'm talking about pure testosterone that is a way to replace the testosterone that both men and women had when we were young. And there is so much misinformation, I can't even explain how much, that I I sit across from usually women who will tell me that they're afraid of taking testosterone because they read blank study. And this study said it was dangerous. And this study said it wouldn't make her bones um, uh, less osteoporotic or it wouldn't help her sex drive. And all the kind of misinformation that patients get when they're just reading things on their computer or um, in the newspaper. So there was an article this week that started out just in one, like New England Journal of Medicine, and the title was, Testosterone Treatment Fails to Offer Protection Against Fractures in Men with Hypogonadism. That means men with low testosterone. Research indicates... Okay, now that sounds really scary, like, oh, if I have a male who has osteoporosis, and one of the things I tell him is, testosterone pellets are going to help you get thicker bones, he's going to think I'm lying to him if he reads this article. And the article, in a way, is tearing down some of the functions of what testosterone does for us, and what it can do when we don't have enough of it. Of it. So... Part of the, this article was that you have to find out what kind of testosterone they're testing. And here's a key point. Every type of testosterone, whether it be creams, testos- pure testosterone cream, or shots, which is not pure testosterone, they're testosterone cyprinate, or pills, which can be two to three weeks of testosterone. You can take an oral testosterone. Um, there are also the creams, patches for women, uh, vaginal tablets, uh, and I would, I'd, I'll tell you now that sublingual tablets are, don't actually get into the bloodstream in 90% of the women that take it, so I just take that off your choice list. But we only do bioidentical testosterone powder, which is pure testosterone, 
that is packed tightly in a specific size for the milligrams that we uh, dose our patients with. And we use this every four months. We put it under the skin into the fat and it dissolves over four months for women. It dissolves over six months for men because we give them a higher dose and larger pellets. And women can't tolerate the dose that would be required. Men have 10, 10 times as much testosterone anyway, so women can't take the six-month dose in general. They have to take a four-month dose to keep it even and not have side effects. So I use pellets because they have the lowest um, side effect profile. People don't have as much erythrocytosis, the um, increase of their red blood cells. They do have really good effectiveness for their sexuality. They have effectiveness for building muscle, for building bone, for making them not stooped over and frail when they get old, and for pre protecting people against heart disease and diabetes and, um, and obesity, because obesity goes along with getting old when you live in America because we have so much food. And it's not necessarily nutritious food. It's not, it's junk food for a better term. I can't really think of it, but it's, it's usually carbohydrates that we don't need because we don't uh, work physically every day anymore. At least most of us don't. So you have to find out in a study, what are they talking about? What kind of testosterone are they talking about? Because they were talking about testosterone cream. So one thing you know, that you should know about anything that you put on your skin that is testosterone and you're trying to get it into your bloodstream is that about 60% of a cream or a gel or a patch that has testosterone as its hormone to try to get through the skin, it turns into about 60% estrogen. So that may not be that bad for a female, but for a man, that's bad because if you give a man estrogen and you don't give him enough testosterone, the estrogen competes with testosterone at the receptor sites and the estrogen will win. So you may have a good blood, blood value, but then when you talk about does it really do the things we said it would do, like make your bones thicker and actually make your muscles bigger and go back to a normal, healthy, young body, and protect you from all these different diseases, it's not gonna do that because estrogen in men doesn't do that. So this particular article was designed to fail because it used a cream and it basically used men who had had low testosterone, very low testosterone, under 300 total, and they didn't mention the free testosterone, which is key to knowing uh, whether they had enough testosterone. Free testosterone is what you feel, what you actually are receiving. It is free of binding. It is out there working. The total testosterone is 98% um, bound up with a protein and doesn't work. So the total doesn't tell me much. The free does. So in this study, we had a cream now we know it turns into estrogen. We had men that have a really low testosterone level and they're older and most likely have some osteoporosis already because they've had a low testosterone. So then you have to look at how long did we look at these studies? When we tested the bisphosphonates, which is like Fosamax, we tested them for years. This study, I mean 10 years, this study was three years of using cream that isn't going to give you enough testosterone, that is given to men who don't have any testosterone of their own, and they found that they did not build bone. Okay, that makes sense to me, because they weren't using a form of testosterone that does build bone, and they weren't using a high enough dose, and they didn't watch them for enough years. If this was really going to work, they should have watched them for a decade, and then we would have seen the growth. So the study, I think, was meant to deter men from taking testosterone to build their bones up. That's a problem. I mean, you can, I have to say, you can almost make any study say what you want it to say by decreasing dose or using a different form of testosterone or estrogen. 
you can you can change the variables even with your treatment group so that it's not going to work or you can make it look like it is going to work but that's harder it's easier to make it look like it's not going to work because they do this with vitamins and they used to do this a lot more than they do now they used to say ah you don't need vitamin d we gave somebody um let's see 500 units of vitamin d every day and it didn't help their bones and and it didn't make them uh, think better and it didn't decrease their rate of of uh, cancer all the things that vitamin d really does they un underdose them well if if i give you water instead of giving you the medicine that you need your your it's that medicine is not going to work so it's kind of like doing that they they gave their um, study subjects too little vitamin D to actually work. And it was only until, uh, let's see, early or the 2005, 2008, when they started actually bringing the doses of vitamin D up so that we they had an actual good blood level that actually was significant and made bones grow and did all the other things that vitamin D does. So the uh, daily dose of vitamin D is usually 5,000 units, 2,000 to 5,000, but generally 5,000 if you're not out in the sun and you're not fair of skin. Fair skin absorbs vitamin D better than dark skin. So the darker your skin and the higher up you live close to the um, North Pole or to the South Pole where you don't get a lot of direct sunlight most of the year, then that means you need more vitamin D to be replaced effectively. These are the things that you don't know about studies. All they tell you is the dose, and you may not know what that dose means, and who's getting it and how long they did the study. So when you're talking about testosterone, the first thing you need to know um, is, did the study use pure testosterone, or did it use a chemical variant that is kind of like testosterone that you make, but not exactly. And that the, the farther you um, veer away from pure testosterone, the more side effects you get. Because your body's not used to that chemical, it's used to pure testosterone. So the reason they put a cyprinate side chain on testosterone that you get injected is so that it lasts longer in your body. Well, that means it goes through your liver over and over and over again over the course of a month. Some people take it every two weeks. But it is turning into more DHT and you get more hair loss and you get uh, more prostate enlargement and you get a lot of other side effects, sweating and um, an increased um, erythrocytes, especially in men. So the shots have a lot of negative um, side effects that the pellets don't. So the type of testosterone, this is just an example, the type of testosterone does change your outcome and you should choose the type of testosterone that has the fewest side effects and has the most bang for your buck and that's pellets. And that's why I only do pellets because the others are inferior. And for years I didn't have pellets and I would just ha and I was only treating women and I'd give them testosterone and they'd feel kind of, oh, I feel better but I don't feel like myself. With pellets, in general, most of the time, people will come back and say, oh, I feel like myself again. I'm, I've got my sex drive back. I've got energy. I'm feeling better. I, my muscles are coming back. I'm losing fat. And that's the response I want. I want to bring people back to where they used to be when they were in their 30s, and no matter what age they are, so that they can be healthy. Testosterone makes you healthier. It does not make you sicker if you take it in the pure form. Um, if you look at creams, they make too much estrogen, and that's not good for women. It's not good for men to make the kind of estrogen that they that the creams make, because it usually makes estrone, which then gives us large breasts, women large breasts and a large belly. So you don't want to get that when you're taking testosterone. And for men, you get man boobs. I mean, what man wants to do that? So that's what the gels and the patches do as they go through the skin and make a lot of estrogen. That's the side. That's some of the side effects. So that and that can also um, make you more emotional, 
cry at movies. I mean, guys don't want to do that. I mean, that's not the usual guy unless you've always been like that before. Um, so the kind of testosterone, and I've prescribed all of this when I didn't have any good choices uh, to help my patients before I got pellets. But in 2002, I stopped prescribing everything but the pellets because it was so superior and it made people completely better. I love to make people better. That's my goal in life is to make people feel healthy and like themselves. I'm not making them high. I'm not making them a different person. I'm making them who they used to be when they felt good. And that's my goal. So the type of testosterone matters. The dose matters. You have, and how would you know what a real good dose of cream versus a vaginal tablet versus a shot versus pellets? They're all different. The dosages are different to recommended to get people to feel better or have a have fewer symptoms from low testosterone. You also have to know what organ system you're looking at. So a lot of studies just look at one organ system. They don't say, do you feel better all over? Because that's really hard to manage. I mean, that's hard to measure. So they measure bone, something that you can actually measure the thickness of, or they, uh, or they measure muscle mass by doing a body composition. Um, you also have to look at how long they measured something. So when I give people testosterone, within two to four weeks, their sex drive is back. So that's pretty quick. But if I'm giving testosterone to build bone, that takes a long time. So that is going, bone basically is always growing and breaking down. And when you lose your testosterone, then you stop growing as fast as you break down, so you break down more. So when we give you back testosterone, it brings you back to your normal growth equals breakdown and even a little bit more so that you can get your bones back to normal. Testosterone is not the only thing you need for bones. You need vitamin D, vitamin C, you need uh, uh, calcium. But mostly, most Americans get enough calcium from their milk products. So I don't usually give calcium, but I, also, I do give magnesium to balance the calcium that they also need for their bones. So you do need to feed the bone with what it needs to grow, like building blocks, but, but it's not going to grow without the testosterone. So you have to have enough testosterone over a long period of time to make bone. Muscle, muscle's faster. You just have to have a high-protein diet and testosterone, and you have to exercise using some kind of weights against gravity. You could use rubber bands, uh, but weights are the best, and you will make muscle. And even when you're 69, you'll have muscle. So that's my age. Anyway, the other thing you have to look at in studies is the age and condition of the patients. Were the patients healthy? Were they 80? Were they 70? Were they 60? The longer you go without testosterone, the harder it is to get you back to your old normal. So it takes longer to help you recover and get muscle mass back and your balance back and your brain back. Brain takes the longest. A lot of my patients say, I, can't, I think I'm getting Alzheimer's. And this is more common in women than men. And Alzheimer's is more common in women than men. And they say, I think I've got Alzheimer's, but I'm only 45 or I'm only 50. But they've been without, their testosterone may have dropped early on. And when we give them testosterone over the course of time, it's going to take a little longer for them to get their recall. It's usually recall like, what's the name of that guy? What's the name of the street? Uh, my friend lives on, what restaurant do I like to go to? The recall of those names is usually what goes away when testosterone goes down and slowly comes back if you've been without testosterone for a long time. So when you're doing a study, you have to have people who, if you want to have it done over a 10-year period, you better pick people who are a little bit younger who have been without their testosterone for a shorter period of time. You also have to tell people what the starting blood level of testosterone was and the free testosterone, which a lot of studies don't show. And, um, and, age, and age is key. It's always harder to get people, when they're started at a later date, it's harder to get people back to 37. So when I started, when my ovaries were taken out at 48, I basically had no testosterone and I was probably losing it before that. When I, when I got my testosterone replaced, um, I came back really fast. I mean, I got my muscle mass back. My brain came back fast because I hadn't been without it for 
decades. I'd just been without it for months or years. I, I didn't even test it before that because I wasn't, I didn't think that was a problem. I found out that was a problem when I got it back and everything got better. So, um, so this is why I don't want people to be anxious when they read a headline about a research article because the research articles are really trying to move you in certain directions. And usually I see a lot of, oh, testosterone doesn't work articles before they come out with something that replaces or they say replaces testosterone to treat a certain thing. So sometimes that's the method of the drug companies. It's about marketing. It's not about telling you the truth or helping you make a good decision for yourself. But uh, So you have to know that to read these with some knowledge. It could be dangerous to your health if you believe everything that you read and you think that everybody is looking out for your best interest because, honestly, at this time, it's not. During w, the WHI study came out, and everybody went off estrogen who was on it, who was menopausal, and they think that 100,000 women either died or killed themselves or were, were ill because they went off their estrogen because of a headline, because of that article. Their doctors wouldn't prescribe it, or they wouldn't take it because they were afraid. And that's devastating. That's a terrible thing to do with the with the English language and honestly they came back and when they when they said oh we were just kidding we didn't really look at the study right we they retracted a lot of it and that's on the last page of of the journals that's not on the front page and they're not telling and doctors are still withholding estrogen from people because the outcome the scary outcomes of estrogen were wrong women need estrogen just like they need testosterone after menopause so I hope this helps you not worry so much, and it helps you look at articles differently. I wish they were 100% truthful and for your best interest, but you have to have a little, you have to have a question mark in your eye. You have to be, uh, you have to always think this may be for a different reason that they're writing this, or they did the study for a different reason. So always keep that in the back of your mind. If you want to know uh, what the article said or what was um, or what was um, printed by MedPage, which is who took these articles and, and summarized them. We'll have that on our blog uh, at uh, biobalancehealth.com, and you can look for the blogs. We have one every two weeks. And so you can look for the one on testosterone and read that article. I reprinted it at the bottom of my blog. So thank you for joining us. All I want to do is take away some of your anxiety with the treatment that you actually need to stay healthy. And I hope you join us again next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.